Hello, today is Monday, January 17th, 2022, and happy Martin Luther King Day. I'm Joe Schmidt from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. On November 29th, we recorded a podcast about a dispute between the FCC and the FAA, the respective regulators for the communications industry and the aviation industry. The dispute revolves around the wireless carrier's use of C-band spectrum to deliver 5G and the aviation industry's use of nearby spectrum to control aircraft. Today, I'm back with my guests from that podcast, Steve Rosen, a partner at LB3, and David Lee, TC2's technical director, and we want to give you an important update. When we last talked, we told you that on January 5th, the wireless carriers might turn up the nationwide 5G services in the C-band spectrum, subject to nationwide power limitations. There might be further delay to July 6th for services near airports and heliports where the industries are considering more restrictive power limitations near airport runways and final approach patterns. That, however, was couched with unless credible evidence emerges that real-world interference would occur if the measures were relaxed. Now, that last bit, to me, is more lawyer speak than it is technical fact. So, Steve, as the lawyer amongst us, has anything changed since the last podcast? Hi, Joe, and good to be with you again. And yes, the regulatory and technical situation continues to evolve at death speed, if you'll pardon the analogy. On Monday, January 3rd, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg convinced AT&T and Verizon Wireless to agree to an additional delay until January 19th, just two days away, in turning up service. President Joe Biden stated that this delay was a, quote, significant step in the right direction, end quote. This two-week pause is intended to allow the aviation industry and the FAA additional time to pressure test the power limitations offered up by the wireless industry to protect aviation safety. So, David, what's the latest on that? Good afternoon, Joe, and good to be back here. The good news is that the FAA and the FCC finally seem to have set up engineer-to-engineer discussions between the wireless industry and the aviation industry seeking to solve this problem, rather than the previous discussions, which mostly seem to be led by lawyers and government relations folks. The bad news is, on January 12th, the FAA issued no TAMs, or Notice to Air Missions, or Notices to Air Men, that restrict instrumentation takeoffs and landings at the 50 major airports that are in the 5G service areas of AT&T and Verizon Wireless, including our major hubs such as JFK, Chicago Hare, Dallas-Fort Worth, and Phoenix, to name a few. The FAA issued these NOTAMs because it is not yet satisfied that the mitigation measure offered up by the wireless industry will adequately protect radio altimeters from interference. Hmm. You know, I live in New York and Chicago, so that's sort of unwelcome news. Yeah, good point, Joe. And I would add that the 5G speed, quote unquote, or the expectation of speed is not always available anyway to the user in 5G, C-band, or any band for that matter, since what's important is the signal strength that one receives may be quite poor. In short, just because you see the small 5G indicator on your smartphone display does not mean you have a good speed, downlink or uplink speed. And also, while I'm very pro-telecom and advocating the advancement of the state of the art in telecom, the convenience of this incremental speed from 5G is certainly not even one one hundredth as important as plane and safety of life on the ground. There needs to be perspective on this. Yep. Safety first, obviously. But as you know, 5G is so much more than just faster speeds. And the carriers have invested billions upon billions to get those licenses to operate in the C-band. Heck, I think just last week, AT&T plopped down a few more billion. You know, and another issue that's really not getting too much airtime, these same carriers, they're starting to turn down their 3G networks. Now, you know, David, as I've been talking here, I can see we're going to need some more podcasts on wireless services. Anyway, what you pointed out, that sounds seriously disruptive to air travel. Is there an alternative means so airlines can continue to take off and land these airports at night and in bad weather? Yes, Joe, there is. The FAA has an AMOC, or Alternative Means of Compliance Process whereby the radio altimeter manufacturer and the airframe manufacturer 
seek FAA certification that the radio altimeter airframe combination will perform acceptably in the new 5G environment around each particular airport. In fact, the FAA just approved new radio altimeter models that are installed in a wide variety of Boeing and Airbus planes. This combination of aircraft and altimeter approval cleared an estimated 45% of the U.S. commercial fleet to perform low visibility landings and opens up runways at as many as 48 of the 88 airports most directly affected by 5G C-band interference. But for non-Boeing and non-Airbus airframes, this process is going to take some time and will vary by airport and aircraft type. So at least some airspace closures and aircraft operational limitations seem inevitable in the near term unless something changes rapidly. This is especially true for commuter aircraft and helicopters, which often use less robust radio altimeters. Hey, David, I don't get it. I mean, 5G has already been rolled out in many European countries without interference to radio altimeters. So why are things different here? Good question, Joe. But deployments of 5G technology in other countries often involve different conditions than those proposed for the U.S., including lower power levels, antennas directed downward to reduce potential interference to flights, different placement of antennas, and beam forming relative to airfields, as well as frequencies with a different proximity to the frequencies used by the radio altimeter equipment. All right, Steve. So what's next? Well, Joe, the future is always uncertain, but if nothing changes and AT&T and Verizon Wireless keep to their January 19th turn-up of service schedule, I think we can expect at least some disruptions to passenger air service, likely commuter jet and air freight, which is not what the economy needs right now. All right. Thank you, Steve. And David, thank you. Boy, what a mess. You know, I would have thought that this interference issue would have been sorted out long before the government started pulling in billions of dollars from the spectrum auctions. Clearly, it was not. Well, we'll keep monitoring the situation and we'll again provide an update when there's one to provide. In the meantime, if you do want to talk about this issue or other wireless needs that you might have, you can contact Steve, David, me, or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues by sending us an email or by giving us a call. You can also stay current by subscribing to Staying Connected, by checking out our websites, and by following us on LinkedIn. 